But that thing between uh, fiction and nonfiction, I, I had an experience recently that uh, has, I actually haven't recovered from it, and, and uh, uh, you probably can talk to this effect, but I, I had done these, um, this project over the last four years, uh, the Crayfeld project, mm -hmm. and I had hired these two actors. Right? Right oh, sorry, are we, are we jumping ahead? No, that's the exact question I have for you. <laughs> well, you probably didn't know this part of it, but anyway, so I hired these two uh, actors, and uh, I photographed them for four days in this house, and then you know I, I went away, they went away, I did these paintings, etc. And I actually had gotten so in, into the fiction of, that I was creating of this relationship between these two that even after the, sh the Krefeld show, I continued to make more of these paintings. And, and I had a show uh, last March, last June, in um, Germany. And, uh, and these were German actors. So I asked the gallery if they could get in touch with the actors to have Britain invite him to the opening and stuff like that. And they called back and said the guy had died. Oh, no. Yeah, for like 40 years old, tragically right. died, you know, whatever. And this, I'm sitting there between, well, I only knew them for four days as, as these actors. I didn't really know them. Right. And at the same time, for four years, they were like more intimate than my closest friends, you know. And I couldn't separate the fictional mm -hmm. reality from the real reality. Mm -hmm. Did you paint him ever again after that? I, I did one last painting. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I you know, I, as a literary thing, I kept thinking, well, maybe I should sort of follow this the the, the loss. Of, mm -hmm. You know, maybe that would be really adult of me. But I, <laughs> but I couldn't face it. Right, exactly. I still can't face it. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because I was going to ask you about the actors and, and if, in that project, if you had given them sort of direction or scenes or, or things you wanted them to do or what the evolution of those images was. Yeah, well, I mean, I've never worked with actors before, so I, uh, I have friends who are, you know, playwrights and friends who are directors and, and um, stuff that I have actor friends and whatnot. So I asked all, all of them, I said, well, how do you deal with actors? You know, are they? Can you talk to them? Are they human? Exactly. Or, you know? And uh, I got some really great advice. One that seemed general to to uh, uh, and and something I could apply was uh, give them problems. They love to solve problems. I said, well, well like, what's a problem? You know? And so one friend of mine said, well, you know, like. She wants to borrow five hundred dollars from him, but mm -hmm. she won't tell him why. Just give him that, mm -hmm. and then. They, so that's what I did. I just, I you know, they're speaking German. I don't speak German. Um, I w I'm taking still photographs, so right. I'm not recording their dialogue anyway, which they're actually making up all right. this dialogue. And. Uh, and all I'm interested in is trying to get some, what, what I think are like a, a kind of reality of body language, mm -hmm. you know, or some sense that these people are in the same room together, reacting to each other. So I didn't care about all that other stuff. Right. But so I would give them these problems and they'd go crazy. They'd, you know, and the thing that blew my mind was that how quickly I could tell that it wasn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't think I would know that because I didn't think I was caring about that. But there were, there were some moments where you just think, this is totally boring, you know? And so I would stop and I would give them something else. Mm -hmm. And that, the other thing that blew my mind were there were times when it was so real, I have to forget to take photographs. I'd be sitting there just like. <laughs> so that, that was, uh, you know, really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, have you worked with actors since? No, no, I've just. Do you think you would again? Yeah. In another language? Stars. 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 Only stars. Name people. I'm thinking Jack Nicholson and whoever. Exactly. And anyone else. Right. Exactly. 
Um, I, mean, I would choose a woman, but that's no, right. When you think about a body of work, I mean, that, that project in particular comes to mind. Do you conceptualize in terms of a whole body of work, or are you thinking in terms of single images? How does that piece of it evolve for you? Normally, I don't think of a series of work. Uh, this, this case, I, I thought of a, a situation which, because I was invited to put, to do a show in this house, and my idea was that I would photograph these people as though they lived in this house, and I would then put the paintings back in the room that the actions took place in. Mm -hmm. So there would be, it was sort of like reality painting TV <laughs> show, you know. So that was it, but, but other than that, I didn't have images in mind. I didn't, I didn't even have a narrative for it. I just simply wanted to see, and, and as I painted the painting, so I, I could never figure out whether they were a husband and wife. I couldn't figure out whether it was a mistress and, mm -hmm. and he owned the house or whether she was a housewife and he was her mm -hmm. uh, you know, daytime uh, lover. And I kept thinking, well, I should figure this out. But, and so I do another painting where I tried to define their, that relationship more. I couldn't figure out whether this was taking place over a, a night, a weekend, mm -hmm. or a year, you know. And, and yet, and so I kept thinking, I'm supposed to right. define that more, but the more specific I tried to get about it, the farther away it got. But it's so interesting because all of that comes through in those paintings that you see it and you do wonder sort of what the relationship is and you make little decisions. When you look at a single image from the, that body of work, you think, oh, it, it is a mistress and a, and a guy. And then you look at another one and you still are sort of wrestling. And I think that's part of what works about those paintings yeah. is that it's not ever fully defined who they are to each other. But you know that it's not, that it's probably not husband and wife. Mm -hmm. That much, to, at least to me, seemed to yeah, come Yeah, in one of the later paintings, it wasn't even clear whether there was a guy and a girl. It right, was, exactly. You know, I wondered about I, that. I mean, I chose her because of her androgyny. Right. She had a sort of a, a hairdo that had this sort of 20s, mm -hmm. sort of bobbed kind of thing to it that could have, she could, she was very gamine mm -hmm. anyway. So I liked that uh, aspect of it. And he just seemed like a big guy. Right, exactly. You know, but, um, yeah, but no, I couldn't, I couldn't decide that. I, and ultimately, I, yeah, I wanted that ambiguity to it. And the, the other thing I, I was surprised at in the process of making the paintings were, was that, uh, and this was not conscious, it just started to evolve, was that sometimes <clears throat> the scene would be from her point of view. Mm -hmm sometimes from his. I mean, the consciousness within the picture changed in a way, <clears throat> in a, in a way that I hadn't anticipated. Right. 